Morning everyone, Yoshka, and welcome to part 4 of Trial of Champions. So we're going to continue this at our venture as we venture into Death Trap Dungeon. So on the last episode, we left off at Paragos 3 when we came face to face with Noi, our trial master, for 3 tests. And then we were given 2 options. We could either obey him or attack him. As you can see over here. We're not going to attack him, that would be very foolish and stupid, so we're going to obey him, of course. And it looks like we will have our first test. The three things I am instructed to test you in are strength, intelligence, and fighting ability. Should you fail any of these tests, you will not be allowed to continue the trial of champions. We insist on a worthy winner. <coughs> the first test will be a tug of war against a caveman. A door behind the trial master opens and a huge man with long hair and dressed in ragged fur strides into the room. The trial master taps the floor in front of him with his hoe and the floor drops away to reveal a dark pit. He then orders the caveman to fetch a thick rope from the cupboard. He gives it the end of the rope and tells it to take the strain with the rope pulled taut over the pit. <coughs> he counts to three and then shouts, Heave! The caveman's strength is incredible, and you grit your teeth to pull as hard as you can. The caveman has seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Resolve the tug of war as you would in normal combat, but do not reduce stamina. Make a note of who wins each attack round. If you are the first to win four attack rounds, twenty three to fifty two. If the caveman is first to win four attack rounds, twenty ninety nine. Let's do this. <coughs> Caveman skill 7, he rolls a 6, that's 13, and our roll is 7 and 8. With our skill of 11, it gets 18, so we win the first one. He rolls a 3, that's 10, and we roll a 10, that's 21, so we win the second one. He rolls a 10, that's 17, we roll a 2, that's 13, not so good. So it's 2, 1, we roll, he rolls a 6, that's 13. And we roll 6, that's 17. 3, 1. He rolls an 8, that's 15. And the roll of 6 makes a 17 for us. And we win 4, 1. We win against the caveman. So let's go to 352. And now it's time for our second test. Your strength is greater than that of the caveman. With a mighty heave, you pull him forward and watch him fall headlong down the pit. Unconcerned by the loss of his servant, the trial master speaks again. I will now ask you a question. Think carefully before answering. He points at the wooden chest in the middle of the room and says, Inside this chest are six small chests, and each of those chests contains three smaller chests. How many chests are there altogether? <coughs> if you know the answer, turn to the reference with the same number. If you're wrong or don't know the answer, turn to 72. Well, it says that in the wooden chest there will be one, of course, and a three small chests there will be four. Inside of each, these three are six. So there will be six times three is 18 plus four. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, sorry. In these six chests, oh, sorry, there are, sorry, there's one chest. Instead, I said three instead of six, so so there's one chest and six chests at seven <coughs> plus six plus three in each, which would be six times three is eighteen, and eighteen plus seven is twenty-five. So we're going to go to twenty-five. <coughs> Looks like we're correct, and now we're going to go to our final test. The trial master remains silent for a moment and then says slowly, "You have passed the second test. Now comes the final part." Combat with me. We will fight with bamboo poles, not to the death, but as a simulation of a sword fight. <coughs> Any strike to the head or chest will be considered a death blow. For your information, my blindness is no handicap, as my ears will tell me where you are. Now fetch your pole from the cupboard, for I am ready. <coughs> as you take the pole, the child master stands up and the wooden box falls to the ground. Treading silently on bare feet, he moves towards you. His head turned to one side to aid this hearing. If you wish to lunge at him with your pole and catch him off balance with a quick strike, turn to one, excuse me, one to thirty-four. If you want to ready yourself to a counter blow, turn to two or four. 
We're going to catch him off balance. Now, 134. <coughs> sorry, wrong side. I say slip off, turn over. Okay, sorry. Here's Kyle 134. Sorry about that. The Charm Master is anticipating your over eager move and blocks your blow with ease. He steps quickly to the side and thrusts his foot upward at your throat. Roll two dice. If it's the total is same or less than your skill to 281. If it's greater, turn to three or eight. Let's do that. <coughs> Every roll of ten. So it's at least until 181. <coughs> You react quickly and block the thrusting pole. You both jump back the encircle each other warily. If you wish to, to feign a move to the left and then dive low to trip up the trial master, turn to 20, 220. If you rather wait for him to make the next move, turn to 204. We're going to trip up the trial master. <coughs> and this time we have another skill check, but it's for him. The trial master is a skill fighter and anticipates your every move, but he is surprised by your swiftness and has to jump to avoid your pole. His skill is 8. Roll 2 dice. And it is less or less than his skill score, so we're going to 40. The old man gets a backward somersault and lands gently on his feet with a smile on his face. You just have to play a waiting game and let him make the next move. We're at 204 now. The agile old man strides nimbly towards you with the bamboo pole held to one side. You cannot tell whether he is going to bring down the pole over his head and strike at your head, or sideswipe you in the ribs. If you wish to anticipate a strike to the head, turn to 111. If you wish to defend your ribs, turn to 32. We're going to defend our ribs. You anticipate the trial master's move. He brings the pole around in a sweeping arc towards your side, but you block it with ease. His pole strikes your own with a loud crack. If you wish to take the initiative and strike back to 239, if you wish to defend again, turn to 237. We're going to strike back. <coughs> and another skill roll for him. You thrust your right arm forward in an attempt to strike the trial master's neck. He tries to counter your blow by bringing up his pole up quickly across his body. His skill is 8, so we're gonna roll again. Oh, okay. We rolled a 9, so it's greater than his skill. We're gonna 298. <coughs> your quick thrusting counter catches the trial masters unaware. Your bamboo pole thumps against his neck, and you let out a victory. Why? You have trapped against the odds over the skillful trial master. Turtle 362. <coughs> the trial master stands back, panting heavily. Once he has caught his breath again, he says, You have passed the third test. You may now leave sorry, you may now continue your walk through the dungeon. Leave this room through the door behind you. The old man offers you no words of advice or encouragement. So you leave his room. You open the door and pass through the squalid, sleepy area of the caveman into a, another long, gloomy tunnel. You soon come to a stone fountain in the shape of a leaping fish. If you wish to drink at the fountain, turn to 95. If you want to continue walking, turn to 329. Well, <coughs> thanks to that the little guy called Billy Bob, I didn't remember it was the last episode the humanite we rescued from the spider. He gave us the advice under our, the info box, and it says here, don't drink at the fountains. So we're not going to drink from this fountain. We're going to 329. <coughs> and look what do we have here. Oh, just like, you know, this is the skeleton cake, and, and this is the sim similar picture on, on the cover. They look similar, do they? <coughs> anyway, you soon hear the sound of hooves clattering along the stone floor. The sound echoes down the tunnel, then you see the shape emerging from the gloom. Seated astride with a white a white skeleton horse is an armored skeleton with a crown on his skull. Seeing you, the skeleton king kicks an undead horse into a gallop and holds its swift sword aloft. You must fight the mounted undead. 
Edge weapons like swords and daggers do little harm to a Skander. Unless you have a hammer with you which with which to fight the Skander King, you will only cause it to lose one stamina point during a successful attack round. Skeleton King, skill 9, stamina 7. Well, <coughs> we have a hammer. Where is it? Where's the hammer? Over here. So okay, we are going to use the hammer to fight the Skeleton King. Skill 9, stamina 7. Skeleton King. Okay. Let's get into battle. We are on 13 stamina now, by the way. He rolls a 6, that's 15. And we rolled an 11, that's 22. He jumped 5. He rolled a 6. He rolls a 6, that's 15. And we rolled a 6, that's 17. He jumped to 3. We rolled a 5, that's 14. For him, for him it's 14. And we rolled a 8, that's 19. He jumped 1. He gets a 6, that's 15. And we get a 9 that's 20. We have defeated the Skeleton King. <coughs> okay, let's go to Travel 209. You open the horse saddle bag and you find a mirror and a wooden whistle. You slip it inside your pouch and continue down the tunnel. <coughs> wooden whistle. And the mirror. The tunnel ends at the T junction. If you wish to go left to 129, if you want to go right to 251, we're going to go left. <coughs> the tunnel extends only 20 meters before it ends at the, at the edge of a dark pit. We drop a stone down the pit and here we hit the bottom a few seconds later. The sides of the pit are too small to climb down, as it would be foolish to jump and to jump down. <coughs> if you're carrying a climbing rope over your shoulder and wish to climb down the pit to do that, touch it to the sixty four. If you don't wish to, you will go you you can only go right down the T junction, to the twenty sixty one. Excuse me. Well, we have a rope over here. Over here, the coil of rope. So we're going to go to twenty sixty four. Tie one end of the rope around the outcrop overhanging the pit. Gripping the rope firmly, you slide over the edge and then ease yourself down the pit until you reach the bottom. A new tunnel leads away from the pit, somewhat narrower than the tunnel above. If you wish to follow the new tunnel, leaving your rope behind to 119. <coughs> if you were to climb back up the rope or retrieve it and walk past, walk past the T-junction, to 251. We're going to leave our rope behind. Bye-bye, rope. So I just crossed off the call of rope. So let's go 290. From a cave entrance in the left hand wall, you can hear the sound of grunting. The entrance is low down low down and you will have to stoop to enter. If you want to enter the cave, turn to 279. If you want to continue along the tunnel, turn to 213. We're gonna enter the cave. The cave opens out, but it's quite small. There's a strong, musty smell in the air, and the grunting sound appears to be coming from behind a rocky outcrop at the back of the cave. An ugly creature steps into view. Its small humanoid body covered with hair. Its head resembles that of a boar, with two calves, sorry, curved tusks protruding from its mouth, armed with a stone club. It is obvious that the devastating tusker is not an ally. Once again, you are fighting for your life. Okay, so this is where we will conclude part 4 of Child of Champions. Because it's already over 15 minutes, I decided to just always keep it short. So, let me just bookmark that we are on paragraph 279. And this is our, uh, our adventure sheet so far. We still have, our stats still haven't changed yet. I said that we got, our, we got a whistle and a mirror and we, we lost our, and we do not need to use our rope again. And we fought the skeleton king and the tr we defeated the trial master. <coughs> so anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you like this video. Remember to like, share and subscribe. 
and we will see you next next time in part five of Trials Champions. Until then, take care. Bye.